The American academic community has got to be held accountable for this. They have got to be addressed. Uh, they just can't be given a free pass. Millions mm -hmm. of people have been killed because of lies. And so the point is, is it in this, to, to the extent that a, a, the truth kills one person, government lies can kill a thousand people. Mm hmm Right. So when people say, well, you know, should we lie or should we tell the truth? And if the, if the argument against the truth is somebody get upset, I'm saying, folks, you need to be upset. You need to be worried about the effect of lies on, on the public, not the effect of truth. The truth is absolutely always the way to go. It has the best possible outcomes. They may not be ideal and there may be negatives, but still the best possible outcome. Until we get that down, our democracy is always going to be at risk. Mm -hmm. You just can't tell enough 100%. truth. Okay. 100%. What politicians have learned, have yet to learn that if you tell the truth and people believe you are authentic, you may lose the election, but you'll win the next one. But if you mm -hmm. have to lie to stay in power, you are going to have to constantly lie. You will never do anything but lie to keep that office. But telling the truth, right, what could also keep you that office, it's just, more in the hands of the public right and and and, and your, your authenticity will be your number one asset and what happens over time is that people start to recognize that and the idea of authenticity as being forced and for, first and foremost the decision making uh, variable as opposed to how good your bullshit is well you get a whole different government then it's a whole different place right the question is uh, though is the the type of person that's high integrity like the last place they want to they want to go is the government for the exact reasons you're talking about well yeah this is this is again part of the problem uh it, it this is a multifaceted this is a this is a significant infection that we have uh yeah. and, and it's like it's like it's kind of like hiv hiv when i first learned about it i knew oh my god this is awful right why because HIV directly targeted the cells that uh, it make you immune, right? It kills off the immune cells. And I'm going, oh, my God, that just opens you up to all these. So it's doubly bad, okay? Really nasty. And as you know, uh, in the early days, uh, utterly fat fatal. Th what's going on right now is similar. What do I mean? Mm -hmm. Is that this, the process in which mendacity became first and foremost the method by getting power and lying and in the money right having to lie to raise more money in order to lie more and and the more you lie the more problems you have in terms of capturing votes in terms of capturing people's allegiance and so you have to spend more and more money on ads to eke out that victory and so what you end up with is a system that not only is being is, is constructed around lies and money the system is so awful that anybody that's willing to not take that route in other words no i i want to serve but i'm not going to lie and i'm not going to grovel for money 24 hours a day this you can't even get in in other words you're just not going to do it it's a hopeless right so the right. system is corrupt and at the same time, it is killing off or the, the ambitions or willingness of people of, of, of authenticity and character to get involved. In other words, it's, uh, it's turned into a giant sausage machine. I don't care who you are. You'd have to jump into the sausage machine and be turned into sausage. And that's nothing but sausages sitting in those, those seats in the House and Senate. Th this is, of course, a recipe for the corpus, uh, the b body politic to simply die. It just kills it off. It can't fight off the infections that the lies and, and, and the money are creating. So we, we have to break out of this. We, we have a limited amount of time before things get really ugly. Uh, and this is where the truth embargo comes in. Uh, mm -hmm. I have a hunch about it. I just got a feeling that this is I, a I, game changer. I'm with you. I have, I have a much darker <laughs> view, but. I think if this doesn't come out, even as a distraction, 
but you know, I believe it's true, but even as a distraction for the American people in 2024, I don't think we make it past 2024. I just, I don't well, define make it. What, what, what would be make um, it? I, I think what you're likely to see next year is China sees such dissension, such instability in the U S um, particularly after, uh, you know, in, in kind of foreign affairs, we're distracted with Ukraine. We're distracted with Israel right now. I think in March, or not March, maybe April, May, they decide to roll the dice, particularly in the middle of a U.S. election where yeah. there's a potential for significant instability. Um, you know, let's say there's another, let's go back to the equine flu in 1918. There were three outbreaks. Let's say there's another COVID outbreak, right? That comes up some other, or some other outbreak of something else. There is sufficient fodder for significant instability. You have high inflation. You have all sorts of other things. I mean, this is without talking about political parties and things like that, that I think people just lose it. I think they just lose it. When the United States and China clash, the world will never be the same, especially when forces beyond reality threaten to intervene. What if the United States went to war with the People's Republic of China? How would these rivals fight for supremacy on land, sea, air, and across the stochastic streams of time? What wonder weapons would be unleashed? What horrors would emerge from the irradiated sludge of the South China Sea? What heroes would rise and forever change the course of history? Tread into the deepest and darkest dimensions of the multiverse, gaze through a kaleidoscope of fractured realities, and bear witness to the disturbing visions of World War III from today's greatest minds in science fiction, fantasy, and horror. Weird World War, China. Available now from Bain Books at Bain.com. When you and, say people, uh, you're talking about the American people or the Chinese people? I mean, the American people. I think... Well, I think, you know, I think you have riots but, but, again, and I think you have counter riots, and I think it gets out of control. Well, so, yeah, we can have more unrest here, and that's a problem. But you were you were moving towards, I think, a more more serious problem is that if things don't start getting resolved, China is going to make a move on Taiwan. Yeah. And if it makes a move on Taiwan, that's bad. That's very, mm -hmm. very, very bad. All right, it's it's worse than Russia making a, a move on Ukraine. Believe it or not. And I assure you, what's happening there is beyond awful. It's terrible. But a hundred percent, nine over ninety percent of the advanced semiconductors are made still made in Taiwan. We've taken efforts with the semiconductor or the recent semiconductor act that they passed, but it takes five years to build a new well, there's lab, at least. Right. Well, we're also committed to defend it. So if we do not well, I mean that's why we're committed. Like that's yeah, a national security, right? Like okay. whatever the reason, <laughs> right. if, if we're committed, therefore if we do not defend it, we, we completely uh, uh stripped ourselves of uh our uh um uh authenticity and that's going to be bad. If we do defend, well that's awful. So there's that and there's still a very substantial chance of problems uh, uh, of a nuclear problem in the Ukraine and and now one of the longest running hate um hatred conflicts hatred hate filled conflicts yeah. is yeah. just uh, ignited again uh and this one is not recent this one goes back 2000 years and so uh we if we don't as i've said before if we don't get disclosure on paper we're going to have a nuclear war uh there's a lot of people that believe that a lot of people in government that think that uh now to the extent that they connect that concern with the disclosure process i don't know but I, i'd be happy to point it out to them if they wanted to have lunch you know i mean give me a call we can sit down and discuss that uh i'd love to get on cnn and talk about this but uh we have been dodging the nuclear war issue forever uh, we're running out of time uh something big has got to happen for us to take the necessary steps to not have that happen in other words and this 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 simplifies it this is very this is oversimplifying it but if it were confirmed we were not alone if it was known worldwide and acknowledged regardless of what the leaders of china may know now and they may know and probably do know we're not alone but now it's acknowledged it's out there everybody's right and there's multiple species open contact is certainly a possibility um 
and and then some people within the Chinese Communist Party or the Liberation Army are, are considering going for Taiwan. To advertise on Through a Glass Darkly, email Through a Glass Darkly ads at gmail.com. And they're trying to they're 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 doing a cost benefits analysis of this and and is it worth doing? I think they I think they they have to factor this in. It, it's absolutely like, what hundred percent. You know what, the the potential future possibilities uh, for the human race for the planet and everything else, um, uh, including maybe open contact technology coming from elsewhere that could be very useful. Uh, it could change everything do we want to, to do we want to die on that hill i mean in other words do we want to risk a nuclear war over taiwan when the world's the possibilities for the planet and the human race have just expanded dramatically and i think i think it's a harder case to make i 100 percent right? agree i mean uh, your entire conception of a national security strategy is flipped on its head because there's a broader potentially broader universe out there i mean maybe we have treaties maybe we don't i have no idea but it just changes our relationship vis-a-vis -vis other countries and how we interact with them if there's something above outside of just this one tiny speck on a spiral arm of the milky way galaxy then there's potential for something great i mean we talk about all these problems we have with uh, global warming, climate change, right? I mean, how about that? How about redirecting those resources for just a change in energy systems? Well, right? this is, this is a, a something we should do and logically should do already, but we don't because there are certain, certain, um, there's certain worldview sets, mindsets that, that have been around for a long. They have huge, they have huge legacies. They, they've gone, gone for thousands of years. And so, it's stepping out of that right into another place right where you're willing to accept there are 200 countries they're sovereign let's not argue about that anymore uh it's just a matter of to what degree they're going to cooperate I accepting the fact that the earth cannot be viewed as a zero-sum game right every somebody has to lose for somebody to win uh accepting the fact that you 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 have to take care of the of the of the people uh, you simply can't have uh, two or three billion people living in desperate situations because they are going to, they're going to deal with that. They're going to create massive problems for you. These right. kinds of mindsets are not quite doable right now, but they're intellectually, uh, uh accessible. I mean, they're intellect, you understand them. We know what needs to be done. So in a post disclosure world, these things can be re, re examined, right? In other words, if, if China is viewing Taiwan as an actual essential component in the zero sum game uh, that, that we play, that in order to help ensure a little with more, a little greater confidence that China will remain a major power and, and uh, will not be demeaned or anything else. So we're going to risk nuclear war. We'll grab Taiwan. Uh, but in the post disclosure world, having Taiwan or not having Taiwan suddenly seems a hell of a lot less important. Right. right because it isn't a zero-sum game there it, it this we're not the only life in this uh, universe and this is not the only planet with a civilization and so it's not just the earth it's the earth plus and so the idea that there could be in input coming in from outside our planet technology advice thought science whatever that could allow us to deal with our issues uh and the zero-sum game is less of an issue then it but if the reasoning is what's the point right uh also the idea that is a, you know is a defense thing meaning in order to protect ourselves against the evil west we must have taiwan now we can't protect ourselves against the ets uh, and so if you're really concerned about protecting yourself forget about the ets because they can take you out anytime they want all right and so even if they're not a threat the point is wait, wait, how do you how do you you just have to rethink everything it, 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 it once it's actually real and in front of you and accepted and part of reality and all, all, all and, and people are already starting to calculate 
let me let me just give you one trivial example, which I I I, I used to do all the time in my lectures, but I I got tired of doing slide presentations. I, I'd rather talk about the politics, but we have this. You know, I, this may seem like science fiction, but it isn't. I swear to God, it is not. We have this massive problem called global warming. It's driving us absolutely crazy. We're trying to deal with it. Nothing seems to really make much of an impact. Politically, it's a mess. Uh, mm -hmm. You've got you've got to involve all the countries uh, to really go anywhere. Uh, and we're almost past that. We probably already passed the point of no return. So you've got this giant thing, right? Global warming. And we're beating our head against it, pounding our fist against it, and we're not making any progress. It's driving us. Yeah, it's a tra it's a classic tragedy of the commons, right? Yeah. And 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 of course, it makes, it makes it a huge political football, and it's all just dry, you know, it's nonsense. Guess what? With the right tech, we could solve it like that. Yeah. All right, and it's actually been raised. Now, I I started raising this about 15, 18 years ago. But recently, it got raised by a standard, I don't know, it was a science something group or company, whatever the hell. And it's its so simple. It's its not even funny. Uh, I, it, it is funny. Uh, if you have any gravitic capability to maneuver, as opposed to giant rockets that blow up on the pad, but if you have, you have the ability that the, that the ET craft have, you can maneuver in space at will. All right. So what does that mean? It means that you can assemble an array of panels in a sun synchronous orbit. In other words, the array of panels is, 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 is it can be, can be moved in such a way that wherever the earth is, it is always between us and the sun direct. It's a little trickier than an Earth synchronous orbit where you just park something and with the right speed above a spot on the Earth and it just stays there. The, because that's because the, the Earth is, you know, it just goes around like this. But our orbit around the sun is is uh, is an ellipse. So it has to it has to be able to move. But again, that's that's not a big deal. Right. And so what you do is you assemble a array of panels in that in, a, in the right spot with respect to the Earth and the sun. And they can be like this fine but then you can manipulate them at will and you can turn them in such a way that they start reducing the amount of energy from the sun that hits our earth call it light call it energy whatever you know reduce the energy it will take very little a tiny amount a small percentage to drop the temperature on the planet because there's less energy coming in so the temperature drops it's basically a temperature control system but it works both ways if down the line we start into a process which we know from from our understanding of a geology that we're heading towards a cooling period mm -hmm. which could start sliding some glaciers down you know across canada into new york you can arrange the panels to reflect a little more light now there is some suspicions out there that the concept this kind of concept has been attempted already using a really dumb method and that is putting stuff into the atmosphere that has a certain reflective uh, capability oh yeah like silicon dioxide Sil silicon dioxide is like eighty thousand feet whatever. it's it's generally comes under the heading of uh chemtrails which yeah, is geoengineering a imprecise thing the point is is that if they have tried it it was a dumb thing to do but it makes the point right uh anything you put in the sky there's almost nothing you could put in the sky in that way that is not going to be really bad for the mammals on this planet and pretty much every other life form i don't care what it is right and so that was stupid but the idea was there all you have to do is alter it but panels an array, panel rate this has come up there's actually a company that makes panels but not necessarily for this purpose and so here is here is how simple this could be we get uh, we get a we the intel committee holds the hearings in january one week of that the president comes forward and confirms the extraterrestrial presence okay whatever's going on in the election i don't care at that point but later in 2024 uh it is confirmed by the united states government yes we have uh anti-gravitic technology re-engineered from from uh these crafts 
and we've actually got our own vehicles. Okay, now that that's out, oh, now that the ET presence is confirmed, then that, that's out there. Okay, fine. Okay, now that it's out there, well, what can we do with them? Well, we could start putting that panel array up. It wouldn't necessarily cost that much. Once you go anti-gravitically, you, you, you go fast, all right? And so hey, you got to build the panels, and they, they yeah, but they're pretty much nothing more than reflective devices with maneuverability. And so you put the panels up in 12 months. We could literally have the, 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 the solution to global warming, and all it would do was create a bunch of jobs, high-paying yeah. jobs for people. Yeah. And instead of what we're going through now, which is absolute madness, driving everybody crazy. Now, people say, well, that's science fiction. No, it's not. It isn't science fiction. Why? Because the ETs are here and they do have anti craft. We have gotten those craft and there is a decent amount of evidence that we've re-engineered them. And the only reason that the government doesn't fly them out there with a, an American flag on them, because the moment they did that, it would pretty much destroy the truth embargo. It would end it. And they're not prepared to do that. Right? So they have other reasons as well. I hope I'm right about this because that 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 technology that solution is perfect it is non-polluting right very controllable right so if you're a little off no problem it's just you know, a little too whatever and 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 and, and manipulatable in a lot of ways right and so consequently all you have to do is just be very careful about how you do it and you can maintain the, the global pressure now that that doesn't solve the pollution issue but Again, the pollution issue is solvable by a non-fossil fuel energy system. Well, right. we're pretty sure they don't use that in the craft. So, but let's put a pin in that. But let's go somewhere else. Again, not science fiction. This is not science fiction. We have a massive problem that isn't even talked about anymore on this planet. It's 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 one of those things that, like there's nothing we can do about it. It's really bad. But why why depress ourselves by bringing it up? And the it's, in the oceans? it is the problem of spent nuclear fuels. Mm. We are building up massive quantities of spent music, uh, nuclear fuel, nuclear, what do you mean? Right now, I'm, again, I'm, fuel I'm rods, and, 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 and the waste. stuff is in underground barrels and above ground barrels and in mounds of it. And it's, and it's all over, it's all over the world and it's decaying. It's polluting but it is the ultimate one of the ultimate terrorist targets in other words if you can get 25 30 pounds of c4 into one of these storage areas and you set that off a, a, an entire state in the united states could be unlivable mm-hmm. would be like the Cherno- the area around chernobyl only the whole freaking country right and it could happen at any time and it just gets worse and worse and worse how do you solve it they can't do a damn thing they, 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 one, one, there's one company working on trying to come up with a bacteria that'll eat it. At one point, they were going to try to store it in Yucca Mountain when some somebody sort of pointed out, well, one, do we really want that much stuff in one place? And how are we going to get it there? We're going to have to put it in trains and 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 and, and cross multiple states and, and any governor that lets that happen is out of their mind. And so they can't do anything. Guess what? Any graphitic technology yeah, fly, it's it's flying to the sun right yeah. all you do is you just build a nice you know you, you, a nice uh, you know uh, we can call it uh, uh, a device or not a device but uh, you know a a, uh, a container right like we do with those trucks right those containers that come off the ships go on the trucks you get one of those big one you stuff it full of fuel it's it's part of a anti-gravitic uh system and you simply take it up into orbit pretty safe okay i mean it's not perfectly safe but you sure as hell are not going to take it, send it up into orbit on a rocket right no way right. And right. once you get it up that ca- that container has its own rocket system and you simply direct it in the right direction set the rockets off and you shoot it into the sun we can probably completely eliminate all of the nuclear waste on uh, 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 spent fuel waste on this planet in a year or less problem solved This is not science fiction. Th- this is simply a logical extension of where we are and have been for some time. And the reason it seems like science fiction is because the government says we have no 
vehicles. We have there is we don't there's no such thing as anti gravitic drive, uh, and we don't have it. It doesn't exist, etc. Yada yada yada. So you see where you start to get into real effects, real implications of this, mm-hmm. and so in the post disclosure world, if that emerges quickly, which the government would be crazy if they didn't. And suddenly, uh, many nations are actually discussing the, the realistic possibility of getting the global warming issue under control in a short amount of time. That's kind of a cool thing. People would be, I think, pretty happy about that. Everybody, China would be happy about it. Russia would be happy about it. They'll all be happy about it. We're like, hey, we, we, we're not going to have that problem. That's great. And now if an energy breakthrough comes and we can actually eliminate fossil fuels, and by the way, the fossil fuel companies will still do just fine. They'll all they'll be they'll be richer than ever in a post fossil fuel because they will be investing huge sums of money in all of the things that low cost. Well, I mean, have. if 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 you have any gravitic technology, you will by definition solve the energy problem. Probably. Uh it it there's only one caveat there, and that's it and I when initially I didn't think about this, but eventually I did. Because well, every one of something. these things is a weapon. <laughs> that, that's the that's if, the problem. If you have a tech that can zero up the gravity on something, right? One, once you've done that, you can move that that device with almost nothing. You don't need hardly any energy to move it. It has no weight. And so, in that sense, the question then comes: How much energy involved is involved in creating any gra- gravity? One would logically think that it would be a lot we don't know but we we need to know one way or the other right now again if we go to if we get to open contact which i think w- w- would happen two years approximately after disclosure in an open contact if we were to ask the ets who might be in direct communication with us in discussions about whatever is relevant exopolitics as it were we might ask them uh, is there an energy system that will provide all the energy pretty much we need without having to pollute? And they would go, oh, yeah, sure. We had we had that 10,000 years ago. Bingo. So we might get it that way. Again, massive problem solved. Disclosure is, 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 is if anything, a door to an almost a completely different future for the human race. And not in 100 years or 50 years, but in, in a decade. It's literally a door into another world on this planet by a simple logical analysis of what we know, what we already have technologically accomplished, and what what would be added to that. And then if once you throw in open contact, it, it, the door really opens up. This is what is on the other side of this event and why it is the ultimate activist movement of all time. Uh, uh, fortunately, it's not as painful or as dangerous as the others and is completely nonviolent, which you don't have to be dangerous to be important, but, but it's, it's nice that that's the way it is. And to be able to say it's perhaps the greatest activist movement, all to- activist movement of all time, because where it goes, what it leads to very quickly. Again, I, it's, this is you know this is being written up in the books behind me it's 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 discussed more and more now uh but i'll tell you it's the the truth embargo is is obviously clearly suppressed the ability of making this point of getting this across to the human race uh and this goes back pretty far uh again uh, up until the end of the cold war or at least the end of the Soviet Empire uh, in 91, 1991. Uh, up until then, uh, it, the, the, the truth embargo was locked in, and so I'm not going to not going to beat that, you know, that horse. Right. Uh, it's not it's not worth it. It was never going to go anywhere. You know, all those nuclear weapons ready to go at any time. Nine countries, so you couldn't rock the boat. And so let's just talk about 91-4, which is now 32 years. That's three decades. That's a long time. All right. And so uh, if we had moved then, what has happened since the 1991? A lot of awful stuff has happened is what has happened, right? Uh, 20 year war in Afghanistan, several million dead in the Middle East. Uh, uh, 
uh, well, I don't need to go over it. The point is, is that uh, and then told trillions of dollars again spent on maintaining this this right. the mutual assured destruction modality that somehow keeps us from from really blowing everything up. Trillions, trillions, trillions of dollars in those thirty years. I mean, it's, it's hard to measure it, but in uh, in terms of global expenditures uh, adjusted for inflation, it could be a hundred trillion, hundred and fifty trillion. It's a huge amount of money spent on just maintaining the mutual share destruction and and hundreds of bases and everybody d- defended up to the yin yin yang money that could have been spent solving massive problems. So so just the cost of of just the last thirty years is enormous. All right, okay, but those thirty years are are past. We are where we are. And disclosure is is at hand. And could I get an invite tomorrow to any major university to talk like this? No. No. Not going to happen. You, it, 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 these kinds of discussions are happening on podcasts and they're happening on some of the conferences. But in terms sure. of the, the, the mainstream, no. They still haven't realized that there's so much more here than ETs are here, here ETs are not here, right? And so they're covering it. Okay, fine. When the government decides to do it, okay, we're covering it. We're not going to press. But there, th- this kind of discussion is simply not in play. Uh, I hope, and, and I take, I'll take responsibility for my my failure here. I did not establish the credentials in life that I should have when I was younger. I, I was uh, not uh, not functional too well. I'm, I was not an happy guy, and I was not not really productive, and I didn't know what to do with myself. And so I didn't develop the credentials. I didn't build wealth. And so when I got in as an activist, I was significantly limited, and I still to some degree am. I, I respect that. It's okay. Uh, there are others, though, who had all the credibility that also tried to gauge this issue, and they got slap back yep. and substantially limited so i don't feel too bad about that i mean john mack was an amazing extraordinary man of com- tremendous accomplishments Pulitzer prize and creating uh, projects and everything that were dealing with a whole range of hu- hugely uh, big human problems in the highest level with with the highest level of credentials and they they came down on him right away tacked him mm-hmm tried to take him out out at Harvard, had to fight for that. And before he, he could re- maybe really get things going again, he, he, he had an accident, a terrible accident. He was killed. Edgar Mitchell, for years, was trying to advance the issue to some degree with the credentials. You know, let's you know. Yeah, he astronaut, is, right? sure, walked on the moon. Okay. And, and what happened? NASA ignored him, tried to embarrass him. And so the fact is, you could have had all the credentials you wanted and you still could not really get hurt right and the and the mainstream world was still going to hold you off and the academic world certainly wouldn't want to even touch it uh and, and so i don't feel quite as bad about that but let's be clear the intellectual range of this issue is profound and the failure of universities to bring on the people who don't have PhDs but have written these damn books behind me and let them talk to the students is an absolutely egregious intellectual mistake, a catastrophe in some ways. They should be utterly ashamed of themselves. They should completely rethink what it means to be a college professor or be a college at all and what they do and why they do it. Because on this issue, they have failed in every possible way. And as we move to disclosure, they're still failing. And eventually, when disclosure happens, what they'll end up doing is bringing on a couple of people that don't know their ass from their elbow on this issue, but have two PhDs and say, please tell the students about it. Because they don't yeah. want to admit to the people that they have completely shut out how wrong they were. I hope that doesn't happen. I hope yeah, they see that, the light. That, that right. happens a lot when in any field when something moves from relative obscurity to... Yeah kind of center you'll see people suddenly appear out of nowhere with the phds and they suddenly become that's going to be really irritating because there's going to be some of that that happens but fortunately and i and i don't want to get too worked up about that but fortunately thanks to the the modern era of citizen journalism citizen documentaries 
So it isn't everything, okay? And of course, the mass, the vast global connection that now everybody has. It's going to be a lot harder to pretend that none of us existed, okay? Mm -hmm. And you are you are playing your role. I mean, you're playing your part without question. You're one of huge numbers of podcasts that are addressing this issue. And the tech just gets better. The cameras get better. The mics get better. The platform availabilities. I know some people got plat. You know, they they they've got their podcast on like twenty nine platforms. Uh, yeah, you have to. So, you have to. Right. You have yeah. to. So right. I think post disclosure, <laughs> clearly, I think the prospects for proper in, in, uh, involvement and and not only just appreciation but involvement and 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 being heard by the people that that have have put the time and grade on this are are far greater than they they have been in past times uh so i don't want to i don't want to bellyache too much uh i think it'll be okay i wish they would open up sooner because it would help advance the process um but steve when this thing opens up you're going to be so busy well, that you're <laughs> it's all, all all that attention that you've craved for 30 years it's or for however many i mean many decades yeah. is all gonna come at once like a fire hose so yeah, i'll be busy i have other i have other you know it, they, they will there are people in this field that are are going to be able to really go pretty far pretty fast uh and some not so far so fast i'm i'm certainly not in the top of that list but i'll I'll be fine. I'll be busy. I, I don't have that much time left, but uh, um, but I'm still here, and yeah. and uh, and I've got a lot of colleagues that aren't, and that always pains me. It, it, every time we lose another one, it just kills me because we're so close, you know. Yeah. Uh, but um, uh, what was I going to say? Uh, oh well, here's an example. Years ago. Because Richard Dolan and I, every time we get together, we, we, it's always great. I mean, he he and I have just this just this right. There's just enough differences, but enough appreciation that we when we get together, do a dialogue or whatever, it's always going to be great. And we've done it a number of times. And somebody in New York who was interested in this issue got in touch with me and said, you know, we want to we want to get we're doing we want to get the uh, do something here. And I said, hey, let's 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 do a dialogue, Richard and I, on this issue what what are the possibilities and so he did some checking and he said look I, I can get this set up at the new school now the new school in new york's pretty significant place they got fantastic mm -hmm. so he's he's getting that set up and i'm excited so i get in touch with richard and i tell him look this is kind of going into place you're, you're on board oh yeah absolutely on board so we're looking forward to doing this until the new school found out what the subject was and said that their facility would not be available one it's just so so yeah. passive aggressive too so passive aggressive yeah so i i i one of the things i'm going to be emphasizing post disclosure is i'm going to be i'm going to be definitely you know if i could if i had the patience to write i certainly should do that but i don't i i my attention span and patience is is, is worse than it ever was but the American academic community has got to be held accountable for this. They have got to be addressed. Uh, they just can't be given a free pass. Now, I'm not talking about truth. I mean, this isn't, you know, we're not talking about crimes or anything else. Uh, and it's not about I told you so. But and Academy it, is supposed to be a place for rigorous intellectual debate, no matter what the topic, even fringe topics. If it's a fringe topic and it has no basis in reality there should at least be a platform to expose that topic uh, uh if it's a topic that that is that is considered fringe but there's something to it there should be a method for debate sunlight is always the best disinfectant oh uh, i'm refer well i'm so yeah that's that's part of this i i, I do believe that there 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 are just some some areas that are not appropriate in other words it is so ridiculous that you 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 know you are you have x amount of time you have x amount of resources and you have to triage some right so sure. not everything technically does not cannot have does not have a right well, i'm not saying you need to endow a chairmanship or a chair in flat earth studies at harvard what i'm saying is if somebody wants to debate flat earth studies at harvard let them debate it 
over a weekend or whatever and well, they're foot in the bill you know i mean if they're foot in the bill but if they want sure. your resources so i mean there there, there is there are limits right. But right. we are right now, the problem is mostly not just limits, it's politics. But the point is, is that this wasn't about wh whether something should be baited or not, because it was fringe. The, the colleges and universities knew there was an ET presence, I assure you. This is mm -hmm. where all the smart people are, the ones that read a lot, all right? They can read the news. And so, uh, d d d you know, if you're talking about pick any university, well, take, take Cornell, Carl Sagan. Carl Sagan knew this stuff was real. Of course he did. Uh, but there's, yeah. you know, most maybe most of the faculty of a university may not be on this and may not have any view of it. There's going to be somebody that is. There's every university had people in it that knew this was real. They 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 deliberately went along with the truth embargo as as in service to national security completely, mm -hmm. virtually completely. And again, up to 91 you know not too and i get it after 91 i'm thinking they should be making some moves and they just didn't do it uh and so this this has got to be addressed because mm -hmm. i think this, this this is happening in some other ways uh as they become increasingly uh, you know in, uh, involved with uh, government grants and and so forth uh, to, to pay the bills and so they got a cow toy to government de demands not a conspiracy so much as just institutional but you know we the the academic community is in, in a complete uh, in its in totality is is willing and able to literally stand down on something this profound then you have to assume there's a lot of less profound things they're standing down on and so we need 100 uh and yeah. and 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 stop this nonsense so i'm gonna they, they and, that, and they need to answer for this uh and so hopefully that that'll be a topic uh and, th and they can make up for it by being very aggressive sure. in the post-disclosure world for instance you know i if i were i if i any any university if i were running any university i would give serious thought almost immediately to setting up an exopolitical section within their political science department mm -hmm. so an exopolitical studies in the political science the term right now is not in in play much uh and not to recognize but it's a perfectly good term it's it's just right and i would do that and of course within uh, you know ex exo science i think they, they need you need to have an exo science department this is going to be devoted to uh, addressing any science that is coming in from outside or that we have from this uh or and 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 just embrace the issue bring in speakers be vibrant and engage it aggressively and quickly and not have to be dragged kicking and screaming that would be good. That would help to mitigate, uh, I think, the blowback that they're going to get for capitulating totally on 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 this issue, and and obviously helping the government to keep that truth embargo going, uh, and thus prevent and keep the science that uh, the engagement of the science, uh, the awareness of the science, uh, again under wraps for decades more, uh, in a time when we needed every technological edge we could possibly have in order to deal with the un, uh, almost insurmountable problems of the march to eight billion people uh, the, the and and the vast yeah, military yeah, expenditure. Yeah. imagine wagging your finger at the american public about climate change telling them to use less while at the same time knowing that there's something where they have to suffer less that was potentially easily discoverable within government good point that, uh, like that kind of crap is not gonna i mean people are not some people are not gonna forgive that yeah well again public relations and i've talked about the public relations issues out of face and why this whole uh disclosure process or the cold control disclosure initiative which is what all this has been uh to right. get there and do it is is needed because it will help and mitigate that public relations problem a little bit uh but man that the, the list of public relations issues they face is enormous all right how about this one i could imagine a situation where somebody uh that's been working in this programs for years and kind of in the know kind of gives an interview and 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 in the in the new era of of authenticity and uh truth telling basically says you know 
one of the reasons that uh, you're not really seeing a full court press on the global warming uh, is because we've we've always known we had the answer. So we knew we could fix it, right? <laughs> but we couldn't fix it until the tech was usable in the public domain, and we couldn't do that until we ended the truth embargo. And so until the truth embargo was over, it wasn't available. Once it's over, oh, yeah, we can fix it. But we couldn't tell you that. And so you're 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 spending money and running and running around and 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 having throwing fits and fighting each other and political stuff and all this crap uh and also affecting uh international relations uh between countries and so forth when that we, we've always known we had the solution a lot of people are going to go that really irritates me right that, yeah yeah like look I, I lost you know that. yeah somebody's gonna be like i lost my dad in iraq what the f right yeah you can go there too. right like like i'm just ta- i'm just taking it to kind of one extreme but somebody might look at it from that frame and it's gonna be like what the what the f well remember i talked about what would the century have been like the 20th century second half if yeah. we closed as you get closer to the future when as you get closer to the modern era yeah there are going to be people saying if you if you if, if clinton the, the way they were going to do it was not going to work. I mean, but, but what Rockefeller wanted was Clinton to bring get the file somehow. He made an effort. It was no chance he was going to get them. But it, the fact that he made an effort was a very important history that that the activists like myself could use to get a good press. Uh, and, you know, look, hey, that was actually happening in the Clinton administration. This serious, this serious issue. Pay attention. So we we melted that effort to, to, to as much as possible. And so in that sense, it was a good thing. Right. And then John Podesta continued to engage the issue, which kept the connection back to the Clintons always alive. Which allowed us to bring it up when when she ran for president and I think would have had very significant uh, impact if she'd won. So I'm not criticizing the Clintons. I'm simply saying that that uh, uh, if somehow. uh, Or let me put it this way. Uh, Rockefeller stated, uh, uh, you know, to some of his, his, his people close confidence that he, he was going to approach Bush with the same thing. So if Bush had won the election, he was going to go approach the Bush administration about ending the truth embargo. And George H.W. Bush was a whole di- would have been a whole different president than President Clinton. Uh, his 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 ability to possibly work something out with the, with the military intelligence community was magnitudes greater than Clinton's. And yeah, so it's possible no, that he might have responded and 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 saw the wisdom of ending it. Uh, but ending it in a way that would be uh most beneficial to the US and to the dependent the Pentagon the armed services and it happened so so we get disclosure in the the second term of the Bush administration 93 to 97 uh wow do we have an Iraq war no uh do we have uh an Af- Afghanistan war do we have a Ukraine uh what what changes there I, we'll never know but a lot of people are going to conclude that we it would have made a difference and they're going to get angry about that and and that's going to be something we'll be dealing with in the post disclosure world it's 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 not it's going to require uh some maybe put it this way at minimum it's going to require some humility on the part of the US government particularly right and other governments as well but the U.S. government basically led the truth embargo in the in the in the in the uh, d- democratic world, uh, and so it we're we're the number one culprit there. I mean, w- we're going to take the heat. Sure, people are going to know that China also went along with it. Russia went along, but that it's it, you know, hey, that's what they do. Companies. That's what the, yeah, that's what they do. What they do, right? We're going to take the, a heavy the, amount of heat on this, and and humility, boy, man, this the, this country needs some humility. I, from the time I became of age and went to, off to college, I was already s- smelling that odor. I said, we, we don't have the humility we need to have or should have with the power that we have. We That's going to be a problem. I, I, I just sensed it. It's going to be a problem. And my entire life, I've seen it be that problem over and over. The more power you have and the more money you have, the more humility you need. And in mm-hmm. fact, it, it, it is the nature of humans and countries that it's inverse proportional. In other words, the, it's it's not inverse; it's directly proportional. The more power, the more money. The I mean, inverse proportional. The less humility you have, 
Yeah, the and less sensitive you are. No, that's that's a, that is actually there have been behavioral studies of people in particular. The more power you have, the less sensitive you are to other small nuances in the power dynamic. And, and thus, and that, and that, when you put those two things together, you get damage. Mm -hmm. Power without humility is going to do harm. Countries without humility are going to a powerful country is going to do harm. Uh, at the arrogance that comes from it, everything awful stuff happens. So. Will disclosure trigger the, the the great age of reform, the the uh, the rise of truth as a, a a trending modality, and the great age of humility, uh, 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 the, the the humility of power. Maybe uh, I I see it as possible, uh, and and those things alone, if if you actually go in that direction in a significant way, we'd have a new planet. We'd have a new world inside of a decade. Well, I think that's the one, or that's one of the many good things about disclosure is if we do have access to these technologies, there's going to be so many opportunities and so much for people to do that it will help mitigate or mute a lot of these concerns and a lot of the anger that's associated with keeping all this stuff secret. If it's played right. One of the, one of the, one of the simplest way to consider our global situation uh, it involves the population issue. Uh, uh, there are people that there are still people that believe that there can never be too many people on this planet. And then if, if we really get too many, we'll simply go colonize another planet. I'm sorry, folks, but you, you're completely in left field. You're, you're totally wrong. And, uh, you know, I'm sorry. I, I, I wish you'd just kind of be quiet and go away. Um, we're already way overpopulated. Okay. And so people say, well, okay. Yeah, well, it's like, that's too bad, right? If, if you're, you know, living in an area that's got too many people, we feel bad for you, but we're good. No. Simple thing. As the population increases, the dyspores increase. And this is absolutely inevitable, and it's only just getting started. And so when you've got too many people, people are going to start leaving the places where there isn't the water and the food or there's too many people and they're going to start going to the places where there are and so we, we think we have a border problem you're going to have mm -hmm. nations all the nations are going to have border problems unless they're uh, 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 dictatorships and they just shoot everybody right they got machine guns along all the borders and they shoot everybody as they arrive which of course is going to create massive uh, unrest and and blowback and terrorism and they're going to start having car bombs go off so that's a simple dynamic. It doesn't take a genius to figure this out, right? People are going, why are so many people coming over the southern border of the United States? Because they haven't got enough water and food, right? Because of global warming, right? Diseases are growing the whole nine yards. And, we, and, and by the way, we plundered their resources. We've, 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 we've uh, overturned some of their leaders. We've driven and crazy. And Europe has it even worse. I mean, the right? same exact thing's happening to Europe, right? Of course. Absolutely. And so they're going to come by boat, by plane, by whatever, and they're going to come in increasing numbers. And you're either going to have to kill them, nuke them, or whatever. And, of course, that's not going to work. And so this simple, simple thing, right, you know, that people w won't even talk about. Right? We don't even talk about it because you talk about overpopulation. Oh, no, 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 that's unacceptable, right, unacceptable because you can't have too many people, whatever. Uh, we have to talk about that. And, you know, Bill Maher talks about it, but it needs to be talked about in a far broader spectrum. What do you do with 8 billion people? Well, we better do something pretty damn fast. Well, what? one of the first things you got to do, you got to feed, clothes, and house them. One way or another, they've got to be fed, clothed, and housed. Okay? And they need some space. Oh, they also need sanitary uh, facilities, and they need medical. And if you don't do that, they're coming across your border. Right? And it's going to get worse and worse and worse. There's so many crises now that you can't keep track of them. There's there's an entire there's a huge cr crisis going on across North Central Africa, slaughter, genocide. It's awful. You, the, it, it's incredible. There's so many other crises going on that this one is backburnered, and 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 you got to wait for a special on CNN to even know about it. It's not even in the news at all. Right. But you watch a special on it, and you're going, "Oh my God, that's happening too." Mm -hmm. uh, and so. Our situation is is really worse than we 
acknowledge. I mean, it's it's even I think worse than the the pessimist activists described it. It's worse than that, only because it's so much of it. Who can keep track, right? And so there's going to be consequences. There's going to be consequences. All right, and so uh, a a a massive breakthrough in technology that can generate uh, heat for a fraction of the cost means that you can set up the uh, steam distillation facilities all over the world yeah. cost effectively can't do it now no way and start generating clean water for that billion or so or billion people don't have enough clean water okay that's one problem solved okay just need that need that, that energy breakthrough is it there very possibly are we trying to get it now we're still dabbling around and waiting for the government to decide to tell the truth i can go on and on and on uh, so disclosure isn't just learning that there's ets here it is a million times more significant than that in terms of the planet as a whole and what's coming on this planet right which certainly if we don't get disclosure soon is going to be a nuclear war uh and those of you that feel well we'll we'll work it out <laughs> we'll walk it off i like that there's yeah. this one joke yeah, I, 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 I think people think that you know you can fire one nuke and so and then suddenly we're like oh wow this is bad we, we will have to stop like it's not <laughs> not likely and by the way right a lot of people don't understand how the defcon system works defcon one is nuclear war and right now uh according to defconlevel.com we, we've been in defcon two in europe for two years uh the us has, has been up to three a couple of times and there's several other parts of the world that have been in two whatever and this is this is simply a group of very high level intel people retired that are maintaining this assessment defconlevel.com if you really want to know how bad things are and so so uh uh, uh nuclear defcon one is really uh, by 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 uh it, it's by commands you can have a command at defcon one and have another command that's not and so here's what i'm trying to say if 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 some if some field commander in the ukraine war for whatever reasons <laughs> who knows why pops a nuclear shell into one of those cannon and fires it off and a nuclear explosion appears in that war then that country uh, or the countries involved are in a nuclear war even if it's yeah. just one okay yeah, if, even if that, it's attack nuke right even if that, it's attack that, nuke. Yeah, yeah doesn't matter that right. country those countries are now in war at defcon one in those countries now a lot of people think defcon one is as it's portrayed in the movies it's nuclear full nuclear global war no it's not mm -hmm. it's 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 nuclear war wherever it is now if it, it, it and the problem is will that escalate to the point that you have defcon one globally defcon one globally that's ball game it's over right and so uh what what i'm so so will there be a nuclear war if we don't get disclosure soon absolutely will it grow from a, the region right out to expand or could it be global immediately right we, we we've had almost had something that it would have triggered almost global nuclear war on a couple of occasions either way it's bad and in and, and the former you have a little more time to you know to find some place to go to right? yeah, you know? yeah. Well, yeah. so you know I, I assure you if a nuclear weapon yeah, you better get on that red phone as soon as that shell hits the ground because yeah a lot of people are going to be making plans almost immediately private planes are going to be taking off like crazy until they shut the airspace down and uh you know there's going to be some uh, some dysphoras uh but you know, if we go right to global well forget it right so there you are so we're gonna we're gonna have that nuclear war if we don't get disclosure I, I i've said that for years i absolutely am convinced it's true and i'm not the only one there's plenty of people that know that's going to happen so that's bad right we want to avoid that okay uh and then the other point is if we have disclosure and the the, the that new paradigm is now worldwide understood and we're not alone and somebody gets a hair you know gets up on the wrong side of the bed and fires off a nuclear tactical shell and we have that nuclear event say in a in a in a war zone like ukraine the likelihood that it would expand i think is far less 
Yeah. I think it's much less, right? As 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 people get worked up about that and whatever, and how are you gonna? What are you gonna do? And what are you? And well, wait a minute. Let's not get carried away here. Uh, there's a much bigger picture than we had before. There's much more complex future, much more interesting future. Let's don't get carried away. Um, so that that in of itself is non-trivial. All right, because you could have a terrorist nuke. All it takes is mm-hmm. terrorists to get their hands on a on, on a weapon, and there's plenty of them. And and jury, and, and we've made movies about this. We've written books about this uh, because it's real, and people watch those movies. Uh, and so a terrorist nuke goes off, takes out a major city, and then what do you do? Who do you, who do you nuke? Right? You you, you really and, and you know, probably eighty organizations will take responsibility for it the next day. Who do you who do you respond to? And so the attitude is going to be just to respond to everybody. Who knows? So a terrorist nuke, an, an NGO, non an S, a non state operator, NSO, could be even more a problem than if a defined nation you know decided to nuke somebody uh so or if yeah. a defined nation decided to do it they'd be more effective in doing it in a way that didn't bring back attribution to them then it gets it gets really messy right? yeah uh, but again a terrorist nuke of a, of, the, of a city of size would could very well escalate and everybody goes down right i mean again it's yeah. mutual sure destruction so i mean th- these are these are things that i think about as, as because they're very much connected to disclosure in the history of this issue and also i'm in an anti war by and large so i think about it all the time uh that's a lot at stake that yeah. is a hell of a lot at stake here just on that alone without getting into the others and so um when i i tell people look uh go to my twitter page steve bassett paradigm research group go to my facebook page the Bassett Paradigm Research Group, whatever. And there's a, you can, if you can click on this recent thing I posted, it'll take you right to a a, a, a press, uh, I mean, a, a an update that I sent out. And in there is the links to 100 members of Congress of four key committees. And you can start uh, tagging them with messages. Uh, they want to tag them with multiple messages, fine. Just don't tag them with the same one over and over again. But you know, and you can you can get this stuff into the Congress immediately into their offices. Uh, they're going to be back in town tomorrow. Just do it. Start today. Continue in the week. Eventually, if enough of those build up in their notification section, their one of their staffers is going to bring it to their attention and say, look, we're getting all of these messages coming in via Twitter, uh, basically supporting this bill. Uh, you, you, you probably should see this. So that's what we do. We'll see what happens. Uh, look, uh, I'm going to move on here, if that's okay. Uh, let me do a little promo, if I would, please. Absolutely. Absolutely. Uh, there is a new organization that has uh, been launched and, and is very soon going to be fully established, but it, it exists. It's called the Hollywood Disclosure Alliance. It is essentially based in Los Angeles, but it's also based here. Uh uh, uh a, a a longtime publicist dan harari and i got together and, and founded this organization uh it is uh potentially significant it is uh, uh very similar to uh the environmental media association which has been around for about 30 years that was uh, uh it's a nonprofit 501c3 that was created uh uh started and founded by norman lear and his wife uh to bring the entire entertainment industry uh closer together and connect network it with the entire environmental activist movement which of course is a huge movement it it got launched with huge money million buck million bucks spent on awards dinner still exists today all kinds of movie stars are involved and so and they have done a lot of very good things to facilitate the messaging going out okay on this issue with the resources that the film industry can provide and of course, just the, the, the networking, the communication, uh, between the content creators and the activists. So they're, they, you know, that they, they can work together. It's not censorship. It's not control. It's simply networking, right? Mm-hmm. Uh, it was not that difficult. Most people agree the environmental movement was legit, that there were plenty of important issues. No, fine. Okay, fine. Well, what we're doing is similar, except that they started with a million bucks and we started with nothing. <laughs> we bootstrapped it. And two, uh, it's not 
the network is not between the entertainment industry and a vast array of activist movements. It is the connection between the entertainment industry networking with the UAP disclosure issue and the activism of that, right? Which is a far more contained group, right? And so the Hollywood Disclosure Alliance is a nonprofit, five, it'll be a 501c3 very soon. It's already a nonprofit in California. Uh, a networking alliance to make it easier for all of the UAP ET researchers, activists, journalists, documentarists, even witnesses, perhaps even contactees, to connect with, in, in, interact with, and create content with the entertainment industry. And the way we're doing it is similar to the uh, Environmental Media Association, but has some differences. But it's pretty cool, right? We have a growing board of directors. It's a working board of about 20, but it'll, it'll, it'll even larger because they're not, they're not, it's a, it's a limited working board and they're not going to have to do much, mm -hmm. a couple of meetings a year, but they're, they're the ambassadors to the world, uh, on this issue. Right. And they have substantial credentials and we're looking to, to continue that. Uh, we're hoping to see some very significant players in this town become board members of the HDA. Now, and then, and that, but there's a, an executive committee that actually runs HDA, right? And that's five people. Now, underneath that are the founding members. The founding members are people who simply are endorsing the HDA by having their, their bio and photo, uh, placed up on the site. And we've got one group of founding uh, members in the entertainment industry. And we've got another group of founding members, uh, on a separate page from the UAP ET world. Okay. Uh, and so what does that mean? It means that whether you're a founding member or not, you go to that site and you're seeing, you're able to see uh, a, a group of individuals in the entertainment industry that are openly saying, I'm into this issue. Right? You want to do something in this issue? You may want to connect with me. Okay. And uh, you're also seeing it. And if you are in the film industry, but not a member and mm -hmm. you go to that site, you see a group of individuals that have been sort of triaged and vetted that clearly have something to say and do and have done have already done things that that maybe you want to get in touch with them which you can do right okay all right so we're doing that but between it, within just the founding members themselves right the film industry group as it grows what what that means is you've got people in that group who want to do something regarding this issue that can, can see who else in the industry is into this issue and go to mm -hmm. them. Okay, so we're networking within that 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 group, right? uh, and then of course the industry people can look across to the other side and go, okay, this is who I want to contact. And on this and on the ET side, again, uh, you you know from that 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 group of people who could who could make the content that you want to make are publicly saying we're into this issue so that's who you're going to try to reach out to right as opposed to just hoping you can connect with somebody so that is a significant thing nothing like it exists now it does we're now up to 86 founding and board members we hope to see it up to 200 in a couple of months we'll see uh and the the way we're going to and the way we're going to operate is responsibly we're not going to publish the contact information for these founding members or the board all we're going to do is new founding members will be referred in by other founding members and board members and if we feel it's appropriate they will be added to the founding members or they might be added to the board all right that's how people will become members once you're a founding member, every founding member ha has an understanding that the executive committee, if requested, will provide somebody who is also a founding member your email address so they can reach out to you. you, you that understanding is there. All right? If you don't want that happening, you don't want to be a founding member of the HDA. Just stay out, but you can still you know, check mm -hmm. the site out and do stuff. If somebody is not a member, and they want to connect to one of the people in the HDA, they can do that. But the way it works is they contact us, HDA. We will then provide their 
email to one of the founding members to consider whether they want to reach out to them. Okay. So it's responsible. Uh, it's, it's not abusing people's, uh, privacy, I think in any way. Uh, and, uh, in that sense, uh, hopefully constructive. It's not going to be a free for all. And then there's another level beneath the founding members called the supporting members. We're going to be going to the world and saying, is this a great idea? Will you support it? It's a 501c3. Every person that donates to the HDA will be listed in the supporting section alphabetically. And we're also making it clear in our mission statement that the HDA is absolutely non-commercial, particularly given this subject, right? It is absolutely non-commercial. It will sell no products. It will not have a subscription. It will not charge attendance to any event that it holds. It will be mm-hmm. completely non-commercial. It will d- do its business based upon donations. Now, the people that belong to it or use it to get together and make deals, God bless them, right? Make deals, make content, and and make money, right? Support yourselves. Do a doc. Make a million dollars. Doesn't matter. HDA gets none of that. It's not involved. It has no 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 connection in that sense. No legal connection. No 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 equity. Nothing. We just bring people together and hope good things come from it, right? In a responsible way. That is now uh, almost 30 days old. It was launched on November the 1st. Uh, and you can find it at hollywooddisclosurealliance.org. Uh, the site is still in development. There's still some some functions that need to be added to it, but you get the idea. Uh, it's been slowed down a little bit. Because and I'll of- include the link below for that. Thank you. So I want to let people know about that. Uh, uh, I want to let people know that I believe a a series involving me is going to land in December. It's not a huge deal, but it's uh, nice. Uh, and if it's well received, we'll probably be able to do a second season. Uh, it's I'm pretty sure it's going to drop in, in December, but you never know these days because of the world's going on. Uh, what but platform Stripe, should people look for? I can't say at this point. Okay, fair enough. So that's going to happen. Uh, I'm going to be at a conference in uh, December 1 to 3, leaving in a few days in Mexico City. It's called the World Ufology Congress. Uh, big deal, big conference. Uh, I don't know if they're streaming, and I don't know if they're going to make the content available afterwards on site for you know for price or something. But uh, it's worth noting that uh, the Mexico recently has had two hearings on this subject. The first one was the most notable, uh, which means that it joins Brazil and the United States as the only three nations that have held hearings on this since 1958, 68, mm-hmm. which was when the U.S. had its second hearing uh, 50 some years ago. So uh, now we have three countries that have had hearings in a, the Senate, right? Uh, so Mexico is really active on this issue, and I expect them to start taking some measures here pretty soon, maybe get a little more aggressive. So uh, I alert people to that. You want to come on down to Mexico City and join us? Feel free. Uh, and then I want to mention that the Contact in the Desert Conference, which is back, it's under new ownership. Uh, it had a pretty successful kind of restart after suffering mm-hmm. through the, the problems of the pandemic, uh, but I think is going to double in attendance uh, this next year, May 30 to June 3. Uh, I am going to be there. I'm going to be speaking. I'm also helping to produce the conference. So uh, 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 if I'm open to ideas or whatever, somebody wants to speak, get in touch with me or then get in touch with the conference, whatever. But it's going to be a big deal. And and given the fact that it's in May, uh, boy, mm-hmm. um, it may be yeah, it might, it after some pretty world. profound developments. Uh, so uh, it may be a conference you definitely want to be at. It's, it's in a ni- nice weather. Uh, a conference is held during these flu seasons are tough. Boy, it's really tough. Uh, so if you want to, if you're thinking about going to the contact in the desert, you have got to get your rooms now, please. Uh, if you're, if you're going to drive over from LA, fine. But if you want to be in a room in Indian Wells, Palm Springs, you've got to book soon. Uh, cause it's going to be, I think, pretty s- extremely well attended this next year. So that's coming. Um, mm, anything else? Uh, uh, no, I, mm, no, I can't think of anything. I'm sure there's other stuff. Um, uh, and events, and I do list them on my website. Uh, uh, so that's my promos for this time around. All right. Well, thank you, Steve. It's always a pleasure to see you, and hopefully 
hopefully we see some solid movement at the end of this year and beginning of one this more year. promo one more yes i forgot uh one of the things that's happening now that people maybe not that most people are not aware of is there's there's entities being created literally for the post-disclosure world uh and uh, one of them that is now operational after many years of not able to launch uh and it's the new paradigm institute danny sheehan's uh, nonprofit think tank it's now operational it has an office open in dc one block from the capitol i'm working with them in from my office two blocks from the white house uh and they'll soon have an office i think in la uh and they're going to be i think they're going to be raising millions of dollars so the new paradigm institute set up specifically to address the post disclosure world meanwhile gary nolan has created a another think tank called soul they just had a meeting uh this is going to be a high level group uh more of an emphasis on the science and technology but nevertheless that is mm -hmm. being created for the post disclosure world and i strongly suspect that uh every major think tank in this town cato institute enterprise institute heritage foundation center for american progress you name it there's so many but every one of the there's some that are very specialized but the ones that are certainly addressing a broad range of geopolitics uh i think right now every one of them uh has having internal meetings about how they're going to engage the post-disclosure world in other words are they they're gonna who are they gonna bring in how are they gonna set up a separate division whatever but they're not stupid uh and so right. uh, the, 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 and and god knows what else is going on i i i think that if you could no, if you could just somehow, you know, have the ability to climb in the heads of you know, entities all over the country, I think you would find there is a great deal of activity going on as people prepare. Uh, but it will, it's, it's pretty much not going to be apparent. They're going to do it. Most of them are going to stay, uh, pretty much, uh, uh, behind the scenes until we get disclosure. Uh, J Danny doesn't have that problem. I don't have that problem. And obviously Gary Nolan doesn't have that problem, but, right. uh, there's plenty going on. So, that's good because when disclosure comes we need to move fast right now there will be people who want to explo exploit this paradigm change for lower purpose uh and they'll be moving fast as well and so those people always be move noted. the fastest because <laughs> they don't yeah the they might move the fastest but again this is where the the new citizen journalism comes in uh I think that those that move quickly to try to exploit this this uh this this huge opportunity and change really to good bad poor purpose I think the podcasts are going to jump on them pretty fast uh and social media in general but podcasts particularly because it's so it's visual you know it, it goes up on YouTube or whatever you can easily find it you can Google it and I think that I think that I think the podcast uh, revolution is going to play a significant role in delimiting that in other words mm -hmm. the nonsense that turns up and jump right on it right highlight it interview people about it and say look no we don't want to go there no we want to do that and that's good again not not technically the podcast world could do this about anything but let's face it there's a lot of bad things that go on and it's not good and we don't like it but marshalling people to pay attention to it no right they got they got lives to do it's not that big a deal disclosure is a big deal disclosure will capture the attention of the entire planet and so you're going to have a huge audience and so if there is nefarious stuff happening being able to draw that audience together and focus on it and go forget that it's going to be there and so I'm, I'm optimistic in that regard so you're going to be perhaps a busy guy post disclosure too as well as your uh, i hope so i hope so all right, all well, right thank Sean, you very thank much, you so much. appreciate it you have a fantastic day you too talk soon if you enjoyed today's video, please hit like and subscribe, and also hit the notification button so you can be notified whenever I post new content. Thank you. Now, if you're enjoying the channel and you want to support it, there are several things you can do. In fact, there are five things you can do. The first thing you can do is just buy my books. I got plenty of books out in the market right now, and I would prefer that folks buy a book rather than giving me direct support because they get something out of it. They have a real tangible product. The second way you can support me is by becoming a member on YouTube or becoming a patron on Patreon. 
and just go to either site and it'll explain everything. third way you can support the channel is by checking out my merch site, which is here. There's plenty of stuff that you could get to support the channel. And I'd appreciate that you, you have it and you can wear it. Not only do you help support the channel, but you also help promote the channel. And I appreciate that. The fourth way that you can support the channel, and this is really easy, is anytime you want to buy something on Amazon, literally just go to the description below and click on any link, literally any link. The channel gets a cut of that and it costs you no extra money. You just go through the link as I'm part of the Amazon Affiliates Club. The fifth and final way you can support the channel is through donations. Now, I don't prefer these because it's more of an expression of gratitude, but you don't really get anything out of it as a subscriber to the channel. However, if you decide to do these options, there's two options. There's Buy Me A Coffee, which is a separate site. And there's also, you can go through YouTube with either a Super Chat, a Super Sticker, or a Super Thanks. Again, I prefer Buy Me A Coffee because that organization takes less money than Amazon does. But either way, I appreciate any support you, you are willing to give the channel. So thank you very much and keep watching. I really appreciate it.